Hello there, everybody. It is me again, Embrix, and uh, my voice is a bit off. I am having a bit of a sore throat, but I did see Captain Marvel yesterday at 8 p.m., and this is my review of it. Uh, the video before this should be of a spoiler-free review, so no spoilers in that one, so if you haven't seen the movie, check that one out. If you have seen the m- movie, continue listening to this one, because this one does have spoilers. Um, so we're gonna, this is a Lego-based channel, so we're gonna be talking about the sets, but, you know, we're also, like, for the beginning portion, we're gonna be talking about the movie. So, last chats, this will have spoilers. Okay, so let's get into it with the opening, which literally was the greatest part of the movie. I'm not saying the movie was bad, I liked the movie, I really liked it. But just the beginning may bring me close to tears. You know, it was so amazing. So the Marvel Studios logo, all the characters were Stanley. That was so great. And yeah, it just was so amazing. So if you guys saw that, um, please tell me what you thought of it in the comments down below. And then it said, thank you, Stan. Anyway, and uh, speaking of Stanley, and it's sad about his death, but uh, he did get his cameo into Captain Marvel, and it is confirmed he got it into Avengers Endgame. So... Yeah, Avengers Endgame will be the last MCU movie with Stanley. But anyway, the beginning scene uh, was a bit of her dream flashback. Yeah, that was cool and all. But, you know, the mission she went on, that was great. I loved the mission. Like, that whole scene was amazing. Like, they started off in the water. There was an ambush, a scroll. Like, that scene was just great and then we move on and you know just the way her um she got captured by scrolls and then they went through her mind that was pretty fun and interesting to watch just that scene and then she broke out like this movie was real action-packed and it took a new direction i'd say for um marvel uh studios movies or mcu movies and i could feel some people complaining about it being um kind of off the story but uh, like some people have complained about that but i don't feel it at all i really liked it uh the movie i genuinely enjoyed it uh it's not my favorite marvel studios uh movie or mcu movie definitely not that is still avengers infinity war it's not my second favorite third favorite i don't know but it's in my top 10 definitely in my top 10 so um anyway um it was cool like uh the only part they ever did was the jokes like when she said like oh i'm from like the star force and all that like she kept acting like it was obvious and that was funny the first time and the second time and then the third time it happened and then the fourth and the fifth and you know it kept going on like that and then it uh i don't know they could have like we heard it too many times in that point but i still liked it but uh then we moved on like i can't believe the cat goose is a flirkin yeah if you watch the movie you'll know what that is but like it, it was like that in the comics, but still, a flirting, like, I can't believe they put that into a movie, like, I wonder what non-geeks or non-Marvel comics fans would think about that, would think about a cat that has pocket dimensions and tentacles inside it, that is called a flirting, ah, I don't know, I want to see, I want, I want to talk to someone who just saw the movie and doesn't watch, like, all Marvel movies, they just choose a few, you know, if they're in the area, and they wanted to watch Captain Marvel, I want to know what they thought about the flirking cat, but, yeah, the storyline was pretty good, I liked all the squaggles between, uh, kind of Nick Fury and Captain Marvel, yeah, those were pretty funny, and, like, uh, yeah, it was definitely cool to see more of Nick Fury, you know, and then we move on, and, yeah another problem she's way too op op stands for overpowered and boy she is everyone complains that thor is so powerful like he went into wakanda in infinity war and he turned the tides of that war come on he just took out so many outriders but captain marvel is even more powerful than that that is saying something so yeah i like the movie my problems are she's too powerful and that in the comedy eh, that's not a big issue though here is another big issue though so uh monica rambo it's her friend uh african-american friend her daughter wait her name i don't know they both start with n the daughter's name is monica rambo and in the comics she does move on to become spectrum which is like the second captain marvel and we do see her suit when they're choosing a suit for carol here's the thing about that for me it was just kind of like uh i didn't like it because i liked her character but she was at least 12 i don't know she looked 13 to me but 
she acted like a six-year-old you know she i don't know if it was a bad actor or if the script was bad but they messed up she she is 13 but she acts like she's six or seven so that's a big problem and i don't know she just kept trying to be so funny like um like when she was like uh when she when um her mom wasn't gonna go on the space station she was like just think of what example you're saying for me like she kept trying to be funny and the relationship for like carol and um, monica rambo i feel like could have been bigger they could have had more bonding moments in that movie if like she does in fact become spectrum and uh captain marvel's sidekick they should have had more bonding moments but uh i don't know that's just uh, my personal feeling and it was cool how talos was the good guy like we kind of expected that from the trailers but i don't know i just uh thought it was cool that talos was looking for his family and and um ronin left and again you know how ronin left at the end that was kind of like she's so overpowered but let's move on to the post credit scenes uh the second one after all the credits um, the flurkin goose coughed up the tesseract you know the second one is always a gag but the first one after the colorful credits before the black screen credits was uh good it was on the avengers compound where like you know uh that i thought was pretty cool like they were with the beak with the pager and then the pager stopped showing captain marvel's logo and they were like and then black widow says oh i just want to know who's at the other end and then uh captain marvel appears right behind her and she's like where's fury and it's sad because you know he dusted away in the post credit scene of infinity war but yeah um that does set up some stuff for endgame you know i believed i at first i thought that she'd run into iron man or something like that and that's how we get introduced to her kind of like how the we got introduced into to the guardians of the galaxy in infinity war and how they met up with thor but no she meets at the compound because of the pager and that was pretty cool uh but yeah let's move on to the set so yeah this set is i like the set definitely but the build is kind of inaccurate you know i don't i'm not gonna complain about accuracy because it's pretty accurate actually but uh captain marvel could have used his, used a dual molded legs but that's a throwaway thing um we got a talos young nick is great but talos uh, talos was <laughs> he's so comical he looks so bad but it's here are all my problems with the marvel st- uh mcu sets for the most part it's the figures we didn't get and i made a whole uh, lego discussion about this so go check that out but it's like we could have used any of the star force we could have used yon rog jude law's character we could have used a ronin minerva like anyone from the star force just so many missing characters i'd say but yeah that is it for this review i hope you liked it and please subscribe to my channel leave a comment down below about what you thought about the movie and i will talk to you again soon